Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following story that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our dear sister. The message reads like this. Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? Currently I am staying here in America and I was raised by my grandmother back home in Zim. So my head, my grandmother, she was a school principal. My grandmother told me that I had the gift, the gift to see things that would happen in the future. I had the gift of prophecy. I did not understand what my grandmother met and meant until when I was somewhere around 16. It was during the schooling holidays. My grandmother came back from her school and she picked me up. She went with me to this other mountain. And when we went into that mountain, we went into this other dark cave. And I once had this other confession about that place where there was one of your listeners who said that they saw a fallen angel. And let me say that everywhere in this world, there are angels that fell from heaven. It is not like it is only happening in Zim. And even in different parts of the world, you can see that they are different gods, but they are almost the same. It is because of these fallen angels. After they had fallen from the heavens, they started to be worshipped as gods, but in different cultures. Even in our country in Zim, indeed, they are fallen angels. And I think that our country, it is very spiritual, too spiritual, I can say. When we went into that cave, we saw that there was a fire that was burning, but we did not walk deep into that cave. My grandmother said that we were supposed to wait for some other people. When I looked at my grandmother, her face was twisted and blackened as if she had been burnt by a fire. It was really scary to look at her. Finally, there were about a dozen of people that were all dressed in black garments if they were women and some of them that were dressed in black suits if they were men. Then we walked into the cave and when we walked into that cave, that was when I saw that there were hands that were just coming out of nowhere, out of the walls of the cave, as if those hands, they wanted to snatch me, but they could not touch me, for they were like spirits, but spirits without physical bodies. When we went deep into the cave, I was told that we needed to kneel down, but at that time I could, I could not see anything, for it was really dark. My grandmother came and she wiped my face and i could see if and i could see as if in that cave there was a light which was even brighter than the sun but i could not look directly at the source from where this light was coming from and then my grandmother told me that i had to spit on my hand and to wipe my face with my own saliva and i did that when i looked at where uh, this light was coming from that was when i saw that there was an old one that was resting there but this old one seemed to be dead for it was only bones that were seated on what looked like a throne or a grave whatever like or the old one was the old one was already dead, but I was then told by my grandmother that this old one was waiting for the right moment to rise up again. I was told that I had been brought to that cave so that the old one can give me everything that I desired. Beauty, strength, the power to command life and even death. I was all given everything in that cave, even my eyes. They were changed on that day. And even the way that I look right now, most of the men, they always say that you look more like an angel, less like a human. And most of the people, they say that my eyes, they are cat-like. So each and every time when I am going around, I have always my sunglasses on so as to avoid men looking at me directly because they will be drawn to me. We came out of that cave and I can say that life continued for about three months. That was when I was told that my mission had started. Me and my grandmother with this other pastor, but he was just a missionary pastor who was from another country, but also here in Africa. We will go to different hospitals and clinics pretending as if we were doing missionary work. When we would go there into the hospitals, all that we will be doing, we will be spreading sickness, corrupting everything that we would touch. Someone might have been brought into the hospital because they would have had a small accident at work or maybe in the car but when they would come out of that hospital they would be having cancer severe cancer we kept on doing this at the school where my grandmother was the principal 
because we were using that school as if it was our headquarters. We used to do a lot of blood sacrifices at that school. During those days, like women, we used like cotton as our sanitary pads. So when these school girls will be on their periods, when they will dump their sanitary wear, then there were two janitors, a man and a woman. Both of them, they had been initiated into witchcraft and Satanism by my grandmother. So then they would collect those sanitary pads that would have been used by those young school kids. And late at night, we would be using those used sanitary way for our blood sacrifices. A lot of girls, yes, I swear that a lot of girls that went to that school, most of them right now, they can't even conceive. There was one incident that still haunts my dream that happened we once went to this other hospital at Parenyatwa which is there in Harare when we went there we met this other woman who was heavily pregnant we met her by the gate my mother pretended as if she was a good Samaritan. My mother spoke with that woman and that woman then told us that she did not have any money at all and she did not even have any baby preparation, no baby way, whatever. She said that I did not even come to register this pregnancy. I don't know if they are going to admit me or not. I just came here and I don't know if they will be able to help me and I don't have money. So my mom told her not to worry for this was the day that God God had remembered him and my mom and my grandmother then gave me some money and told me that I was supposed to go to town and to buy some baby wave. And after buying the baby preparation, I was supposed to urinate on the baby clothes and then I was supposed to return with the baby wave back to the hospital. At that time, I was around 19 years. I drove into town and when I came back, I parked where I saw that there were not a lot of people in a least crowded area. Then I pulled pulled my panty down and I urinated just a little bit on the baby way and I drove to the hospital and I pretended as if I had spilled some juice on the baby way. Then I handed over the items to my grandmother and that woman and her baby, they never made it out of the hospital. They both died. We went there late at night so as to harvest a soul and the soul of her baby. Her screams when we were harvesting the soul of her child, her screams, oh brother Nashi, even right now, I can't even forget the way that this woman screamed when she saw that we were busy harvesting the soul of her child. When I was now in university, I was continuing with my job. That was when I got a scholarship and I came here to America. And I was told that I was going to meet up with some people. So I traveled by bus from Zim and I came to Pretoria where my mother's young sister was staying. So ever since she had gone to South Africa, she had never returned back home. She did not want to communicate with her mother, my grandmother. When I arrived, my grandmother had told me that she was going to give me some charms. So she had been, she had given me some charms and I was supposed to sprinkle those charms by her gate, by her front door. When I arrived by the Nashi, I saw that there was a church elder that was waiting for me. So when I looked at that church elder in the spiritual realm, I was happy because this elder had said that he had been sent by God to pray for me. But when I looked at him in the spiritual realm, I then realized that this man, he had been sleeping around with most of the women at the church where he was the church elder and I said it is fine this one I can let him pray for me for I know that his prayers they will never go anywhere and at that time when we went into the house when he started praying for me that was when he said ah wait wait let us go into the car we must go and buy some food that is how that man tricked me I think that he had been given a revelation by God. And when I got into the car, he drove and he pretended as if he was taking me to a restaurant. But he went with me straight to the pastor's house. And my mom's younger sister, she was with me in the car with one of her daughter. At that time, when we entered into the pastor's house, that was when I saw that I had been tricked. And I realized that I had no power at all for all the demons that were in my body. They left my body and the way that they jumped out of my body, leaving me without a demon that was possessing me. I was feeling dizzy, weak. That was when the pastor started praying for me. When the pastor started praying for me, I then started to call upon the spirit of my grandmother. She came. She came and she said that I should not worry. But what surprised us was that she was standing right next to me and she was like, we 
and at that time when she was standing right next to me it was like we were inside another dimension i was in another dimension and she could not enter into the world where i was coming from the world where she was but we could see each other because between me and her there was sort of like a great light each and every time when she would try to cross that great light that was dividing me and her she would scream in pain and each and every time that the pastor prayed it was like he was feeding that great divide that was there between me and my grandmother my grandmother said embrace the darkness she screamed she said, you need to embrace the darkness so that you can help me to call the principality of this area, the one who controls the whole Pretoria. That was the demon. That was the demon that we were supposed to cry unto. I tried to embrace the darkness to call on the spirit of the principal. I tried to em I tried to embrace the darkness because my grandmother had said that if we could engage with the principality, then maybe the principality was going to make sure that this house, if it had to happen, it was supposed to be raided by the police, even though there was no need for the police to raid the house. So I tried to embrace the darkness. That was when I found myself, I was like in a hospital room and I was being operated on and I did not see any doctor at all. All that I saw was a knife. This knife was the one that was being used to operate on me. It opened up my chest and it opened up my heart. As my heart was being opened up by that knife, I saw living and clean living creatures that came out of my heart. Some of these living creatures, they were like snakes, cockroaches, spiders and crabs. And inside my heart, that was when I saw that there was this little seed that was remaining that was in there, but it was glowing. It was really small. It was about to die. I kept on crying to my grandmother and I said, save me, please save me. That was when I saw another knife. This knife, I saw it when the heaven opened up and I saw a knife that fell from the heaven as it was raining down on earth, I started to cry and I begged for mercy until this knife fell and it stabbed me. It stabbed that little seed that was in my heart. But Anashi, at that time, I did not even know that in the physical realm, I was busy manifesting when that operation was being performed on me. In the physical realm, I was busy manifesting and the demons, each and every demon was being called by that pastor. And the demon was telling the pastor how it had managed to possess my body. Body, everything that it had been using my body to do everything that i had done when i was still in zim then brother nashi i screamed when that knife stabbed me and when it stabbed that little seed i saw a light that was now glowing in my heart and there was a big explosion when that explosion happened that was when the whole room was filled with a blinding light my grandmother screamed and she ran because the light was too blinding then the light disappeared and when the light disappeared for the first time, that was when I felt my heart beating again. Because from the time that I had joined Satanism and witchcraft until the time when I was in South Africa, that was when I had for the first time my heart beating all along. My heart had been made to be hard like a rock. The light did not stop in there. It was as if I saw a man who came who was holding a bucket. This bucket by the Nashi, I don't know how to explain to you, but... The light was inside that bucket as if this light was like water and he started watering my body as if the light was a river that was being poured into my body. And then that was when I realized that I did not have any powers at all. I was being shackled by the devil. And then I felt the chains as they were being broken free. I felt like there was a ton that was lifted from my shoulders. I felt so free. And I was no longer empty. When I opened my eyes, I saw the pastor. I saw everyone praying for me. That was when I knew that I was no longer the servant of the devil. And after that, that was when I came to America. It's not like my life is peaceful. I am still being haunted by the faces of those people that I killed, by the lives that I destroyed, those that are dead. Sometimes they visit me at night and I know that their spirits, they are being inspired by the devil to haunt me. Their eyes burning with accusations. They whisper to me and whenever they whisper to me, it's like they will be cutting my ears with their voices, which will be more like knives in the dark. But whenever it happens, I wake up and I pray because I know that there is a greater power that 
that can even heal the darkest of all the souls. I gave my life to Christ on that night when I was in Pretoria, but the darkness I once served, it is not easily forgotten, but I am not afraid. Even the demons that were my friends, they can come to me and they try to fight with me, but I am going to stand firm until the day that I am going to die, for I know that I am no longer alone. Never again will I ever be alone again. Dear listeners, right there was a message that was sent to me by one of our dear brother. Strange things indeed, they do happen in this world. Sure.